with a series of uh, videos on entity framework that we've started off with we did the first part where we talked a little bit about the concept of ORMs what they are in general and then what we did was we went into a basic uh, CRUD operation using a simple car table where uh, we had basically created three attributes car ID uh, the brand of the car and the model number of the car and we had went ahead and added a record to this table we updated that record and we deleted that record so we looked at the basic basic overview of entity framework using a very very simple table and how to do CRUD operations on that table using entity framework in this part we're going to explore uh, the concept of validations in inside of entity framework and before we even do that uh, entity framework uses two very very basic concepts that most of you might already be aware of but uh, we're going to go through it nonetheless so the two concepts that entity framework heavily uses for validations is the concept of partial classes and uh, partial methods uh, partial classes as you might be aware of is something that the ide uses heavily for the code that it generates it and it's the basic ability uh, which was introduced in the later versions of dotnet the basic ability to store uh, the code of the same class across files or in different places in the code base right even in the same file but across uh, in in different locations in the code base so to uh, to illustrate that uh, i could have a simple class called customer out here right and i'm going to call this customer i'm going to go ahead and remove the constructor so this is like the first class that i have called customer uh, if I can just go ahead and mark this as partial, right? Uh, what this allows me to do is it allows me to have another class anywhere in my code base, which is also called a customer. And at the time of compilation, the compiler would actually merge both these classes together, right? So let's say this had a public void method called add customer, which accepted a customer name, right? And I could have effectively written some code inside this right so this is effectively a method to add a customer now i could come in out here right and i could create another partial class which is also called customer anywhere in this code base in a different file maybe in the same file anywhere and i could go ahead and add another method called update customer out here maybe this is also a simple method which accepts a customer name uh, and maybe this has some additional code here right it's the cases okay so uh, two uh, two methods in two dif different classes both of them have the same name and a partial qualifier now I could go ahead and start creating an object of the customer class out here and when I do new customer I could go ahead and do a customer dot add customer and i could go ahead and do an update customer right so what the compiler is doing is it's merging both of them right and let's take a quick look at why these are underlined let's go ahead and build this okay so we need to give a customer name to this so we're going to give any name to it say welcome maybe sample right so now we can go ahead and build this right so the idea is that both of these methods become even though they are in different location they are in the same partial class and they get merged and they come together when i'm creating an object right that's your basic concept of a, a, a partial class now partial methods take this concept one level further i'm going to go ahead and remove this Partial methods go ahead and take this concept one level further and what that effectively means is that let's say if I was to have a partial method out here right now interesting thing about partial methods one they cannot be public they always are private so you cannot mark them as public and they cannot return stuff they always have to be void so I'm going to go ahead and create a partial method called customer added out here which accepts a string called customer name right and i'm going to leave this empty now this is the beauty of it right you can have partial methods which do not have any code inside it which means they're not implemented yet and what that allows you to do is that allows you to create hooks which other people can implement however way they see fit so the the i'm going to go ahead and explain this right now so let's say if i have a public method called add customer 
right and I also accepted a customer name here right and this was a public method which actually did a console dot right line adding customer right and then it went and called this pri private method that I had called customer added right and then it said console dot right line customer added now the beauty of this is because this method is partial it's and it doesn't have a body so the method invocation out here as you can see is going to get skipped when I hover over this the method invocation is going to get skipped the compiler is conveniently going to ignore this method invocation because it knows that it doesn't have a body right now when I create a customer object of a customer class out here and I do a customer dot add customer right and I can do a console let's add a quick name to this and I can do a console dot uh, read line just to wait for uh, a confirmation and let's go ahead and run this now when once I do this right uh, Let's go ahead and add one more quick line here just so that we know this is over. Right, and we're going to run this very, very quickly. So, as you can notice, it's saying adding customer, customer added, and then the method invoked. What, what you notice out here is that it conveniently went ahead and ignored this line of code because it didn't have any body. Now I'm going to leave this absolutely intact and I'm going to go ahead and create another, uh, another partial class called customer and both these codes are going to remain absolutely intact. What this effectively means is I am adding a functionality of uh, this customer added I'm going to go ahead and extend the functionality of customer added and I'm going to implement it now. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this. I'm going to create a quick partial class again called customer. Right. And this time I'm going to create a partial method called customer added. And this time I'm going to say running customer added for and then customer name right so notice out here that I have kind of implemented this externally without touching both of these functions and now when I run this right it's going to take in this right location it's going to come in and invoke this method so you're going to see adding customer then this message then customer added let's run this adding customer this message and then customer added so that's the whole point of partial method so this part the concept of partial classes and partial methods is exactly what entity framework also uses right so let's quickly go ahead and look at what entity framework does for validation if i go here you notice this uh, database has a property called model brand and all of these properties will have changing methods right which are again partial methods so it's saying on car id changing right on brand changing and on model changing right so these are partial methods that entity framework creates for you inside the partial uh, class called car that it has created right let's quickly take a look at the car class right. and let's go to definition here so it has gone ahead and created a partial class and inside this partial class it has gone ahead and added the correct uh, partial methods so these are hooks that you can use to do your validations so I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a new item out here and it's just a file which I'm going to call validations you could have called it car validations if you wanted to or you could have kept everything in the same class actually let's go ahead and call it car validation rules and let's uh, now uh, make this partial right and let's call this our class car again and inside this let's go ahead and implement this uh, partial method right and inside this let's say that I want all my model numbers 
if they don't begin with so the value that comes in from the model is going to be this value that is going to come in so i say that if i don't if my value doesn't start with a small m i want to throw a new exception all model numbers must begin with a small m right so that's my validation straight away right and that's all i need to do now at any point of time every attribute is going to get two partial methods one is changing the other is changed one is going to fire before the attribute property is uh, the value of the property has changed the other is going to fire after the value of the property has changed so we we've trapped the value before it has changed and we're doing validation on it right so now let's go ahead and add a car object called car let's do a new car object let's do a car dot uh, brand as say ford and car dot uh, model number is say 195 right and let's do uh, db dot cars dot add object car and db dot save changes exactly what we did in the first video right now when i run this right i'm going to get an exact exception from the compiler telling me that all model numbers which should begin with a small m the point being that the entity framework or actually my entity model is aware of the validations that it needs to do on on these business objects right so now when i go back right and i put m in front of this model number and i go ahead and run this code right it goes ahead and actually saves the value uh it goes ahead and actually saves the value on the database right notice this m has come here so that's the basic basic concept of uh, validations using entity framework it heavily uses partial classes and partial methods every attribute in your entity is going to have a, a changing method and a changed method which you can go ahead and implement and put in your custom validations uh, in there and you can lay it out however way you want to so that's your basic basic overview of validations uh, with entity framework in the next video we're going to go into many to many relationships using entity framework and after that probably we'll also touch a little bit of inheritance and data services so this is about it this is all we have for this video thanks for watching bye